I'm just putting a little extra on because why not? Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Aisha if you are new here. And in today's video, we are chatting all about skincare. My favorite topic. I feel like everyone's favorite topic this year. I haven't really ever shared a beginner friendly skincare routine or how to build a skincare routine. My skincare routine can kind of be a little bit scary, you know, if you're first getting into skincare. So I just wanted to keep it simple and just give you guys a very simplified skincare routine. The steps you might follow or you should follow to give you like the best out of all the products that you have and just kind of answer any misconceptions that you guys have questions I asked you guys this morning actually on Instagram like what your number one most confusing part of skincare is and I got a lot of the same answers so a lot about what orders we use products in the benefits of serums if there really are benefits of serums how to use them what acids to use together what acids not to use together literally <laughs> like the questions were endless but a lot of them were actually repeat questions so I can understand that like a lot of people at least that follow me or watch me have some confusions on skincare and I just wanted to clear that up so anyways that was a lot also in this video I am actually partnering with the inky list I'm really really excited to talk about this brand they're a newer brand especially to the US and Canada every product that they make is under $15 it's extremely high quality they're a clean beauty brand as well cruelty free they're just amazing like I've been using their products for the past two months I genuinely see results. I think that it's a great place to start if you're just getting into skincare or maybe if you just know a lot about skincare and wanna experiment with different ingredients. They're very, very transparent with what ingredients they use and everything. And I just am so happy to be behind this brand or like to be supporting this brand. There we go, I'm definitely not behind this brand. That is the owners. <laughs> kind of teased a couple months ago that I will be sharing more about my thoughts on the Inky List. Also, if you haven't seen any of the packaging, this is what the Inculus products look like. And I also think it's amazing that they're also available in Sephora in the US. That's really huge. This is definitely probably the most inexpensive product line in terms of skincare that Sephora has. And the fact that they are so high quality just makes me very, very happy. So I'm gonna be kind of incorporating their products. There are other products in here as well, but this video is mainly just focused on the steps not so much the exact products that I use, but just giving you guys options. So I'm really, really excited to get this video out to you guys. If you enjoy it, definitely give it a big thumbs up. Get your pens and papers ready if you wanna take notes. Yeah, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and let's get into it. So of course I had to come on here with a clean face. There is not an ounce of makeup on here because I wanted you guys just to see my skin for what it is. It has really, really improved throughout the years, but it's definitely not perfect. I still have some problem areas that I'm always trying to target and I target those with my skincare. So yeah, I hope you guys um, appreciate this. So <laughs> I want to get into the first step, but before I mention anything, I do want to say, I feel like the number one skincare concern for people is usually hydration. And even if you don't think it's hydration, it usually is. So whether you have acne skin or acneic skin, I guess is what it's technically called, or dry skin, combination skin, all of that, a lot of it has to do with a moisture imbalance. So whether that's, you know, the time of year or anything, just products that are focused on hydration is so important. That and that's why I always say like Asian beauty has got it down. Like if you look at K-beauty products, I'd say like 60 to like 90% of their products are always focused on hydration and their skin looks amazing. So we gotta learn a thing or two from them. So yeah, let's get into the first step. As you guys probably know, if you are followers of me, I have a very extensive skincare routine, okay? I'm bougie with my skincare. That doesn't always mean it's better. So spending more or spending less on skincare doesn't essentially correlate with like how good your skin is gonna be be. You can definitely find more inexpensive alternatives like the Inky List products or drugstore products or anything. So don't be like kind of just scared and feel peer pressured into buying like a $90 serum. So I've been there though. I am there actually. <laughs> so I've kind of broke this routine into about like five to six, sometimes seven steps, but you can really honestly get it in five steps. So step one is cleansing. Step two is, could be toning actually. I won't really say it's step two because there are some misconceptions that I will cross out over there. Um, but step two I wrote as treatments and serums because um, that 
can really just be followed after cleansing. Step three is moisturizer. Step four is eye cream. Step five is optional, which is oils. And then step six is SPF, depending on what time of day it is, obviously. So let's get into it. I feel like cleansing is one of the most important parts of your skincare because people don't do it properly. Um, I feel like to properly get your skin cleansed, it really, really takes a double cleanse. And whether you're doing a double cleanse with the same cleanser or not, use something that works, okay? So my personal favorite way to double cleanse is definitely with oils. I feel like oils are the best at breaking down your skincare. So I know a lot of people use coconut oil. Can, okay, if it doesn't break you out, coconut oil scares me, I don't wanna look at it. But it works in terms of like taking off makeup or debris. Um, just make sure you're going in with a very, very strong and effective cleanser, like a water-based cleanser afterwards. My favorite oil cleanse is the Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse. Now this is quite pricey, so I'm honestly not even just like totally recommending this. This is just what I use. Any oil cleanser will work. Neutrogena actually came out with a new one recently that works really well. It had great reviews. I actually wanna pick it up. Although I haven't tried it yet, I read the reviews and I kind of trust them. So Neutrogena has a very inexpensive cleansing oil as well that would be a great option. But just mentioning any oil, just to really, again, get off that debris. If you're wearing makeup, even if you're not wearing makeup, you still have like skincare, pollution from the day, dust, debris, potentially food clogged up in your pores, <laughs> depending on how you be eaten. I don't judge. But uh, yeah, an oil cleanser will just help to get that away. And then the double cleanse comes in with a water-based cleanser or something that will just remove that. The second step to cleansing can be something that's more targeted towards your skincare. So for me, again, as I mentioned, hydration is key for me. So I'm always using something that's more hydrating, a little bit more gentle. This is the Purity Made Simple One Step Facial Cleanser by Philosophy. This is a cleanser that I have been using on and off for nearly six years now. It is truly one of the best. So I absolutely love this one. Now, as I mentioned, skincare concerns. You can also use cleansers in this step that have to do with acne skin or acne prone skin. If you have oily skin, anything like that. The Inculus actually has a great, great, great salicylic acid cleanser. And sometimes when I am breaking out, I will use this as well, just to kind of like balance that out, get like that first step of cleansing and just targeting towards that acne spot or pimple or whatever it is. So that's a great option, very inexpensive as well. But again, double cleanse, that's important. Just find a good oil-based cleanser and water-based cleanser that works for you and you will have squeaky clean skin. Moving on to toners. Now, as I mentioned, I asked you guys on Instagram, kind of like your misconceptions. I was kind of reading through all of them before this video. I actually got a lot of questions about toners and this was something that actually kind of shocked me, but also hasn't surprised me because toners, they're kind of that product where you're like, do I really need it? And technically you do not. If you are cleansing properly, you do not need a toner. And I know that's probably a little bit strange for people to hear because you're always hearing about toners. But if you are cleansing properly, if you're using a cleanser with a proper pH balance, you technically don't really need a toner. But a lot of the times people are not. Sometimes, you know, you're using more drying cleansers, cleansers with different active ingredients in them. And sometimes it can really throw off your pH balance. So that's when a toner comes in. So one of my all time favorite toners, this is the Laneige Cream Skin Toner Plus Moisturizer. Now this is a very, very hydrating toner. So it will balance your pH, kind of rehydrate your skin. So I will use this when my skin is just feeling extra dry and I just feel like I need it. And the Inky List also has their own toner as well, in case you're interested. This one is more of like a chemical exfoliant. So it has PHAs in it that will just kind of like even out your skin tone in terms of texture. So this is great if that is a problem area for you. But as I mentioned, not 100% a step two, but if you feel like your skin needs it, then use it. So step two, which I want to just focus on. This is kind of like the meat and potatoes of the whole skincare routine is definitely the treatments and the serums. And again, all the questions that I got, a lot of them were very, very confused at this step. And I totally understand that because there, when you look at the world of serums, guys, I'm just gonna hold up a bunch because, okay, there is a lot. There is a lot. And if you are not a skincare expert, you will be very, very overwhelmed and confused. <laughs> so the way that I like to explain serums is if you have a specific skincare concern that you would like to target, this is the step where you do that because serums are basically just more concentrated ingredients that really, really target the skin concerns. So whether that is acne skin, acne prone skin, and you wanna use a salicylic acid or glycolic acid, whether it's congested skin and you wanna use something like a BHA, you know, if you have hyperpigmentation, which is always my problem, then this is 
where you get the most out of your skincare. So you don't have to use like 17 serums at once, okay? Sometimes it feels like that. You can just stick with one, you can stick with two, you can do three. And I feel like the Inky List does a really, really great job at just educating their consumers on what works best. You can honestly even just like DM them on Instagram and ask them, you know, I have this type of skincare concern. What serums would you recommend from your product line? And they will literally give you a skincare routine. So there are definitely a lot of places where you can get more information on it. So my recipe when it comes to serums is starting off with something a little bit more hydrating. Moving on to my number one skincare concern, which for me it's acne spot or not acne spots, hyperpigmentation around my mouth and then also dark spots that are post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. That is kind of like my key concern that I'm always trying to help. And then and kind of finishing it off with another hydrating product or just moving on to moisturizers. So the one serum that I always recommend for anyone and especially from the Inky List is their hyaluronic acid. I absolutely love hyaluronic acid as an ingredient and I'm so glad that they make one that is honestly so good. Guys, it's only $8 too. So it looks like a small bottle, but I promise you this will last you so long. This is my old one that's completely done. It lasted me well over a month, like a month and a half um, for this tiny bottle and it's only $8. This is not irritating at all. All. And the thing that kind of like put me off with hyaluronic acids is a lot of them leave a very, very sticky film on the skin and it's just very uncomfortable. So I really like this one. Hyaluronic acid basically holds about a thousand times its weight in moisture or water. So when you put it on, any products that you put on afterwards are gonna absorb so much better. It's gonna make sure that you're not drying out your skin too much using all the other serums. You're naturally born like when you're younger with a lot of hyaluronic acid. That's why when you see babies, they're also like plump and like smooth and and just literally like juicy, like their skin looks juicy. That is a hyaluronic acid pumped into the skin. And then as you age, you kind of lose more percentages of hy hyaluronic acid. That's why it's always good to put it back into your skin. So absolutely love this one, love the price. The ingredient is amazing and it's not sticky. And then the product for me that has worked so well, absolutely love this thing. And it's actually a new ingredient that you probably haven't really heard of yet. I um, mean, if you had, good for you. This is their transexamic acid. Let me just make sure I pronounce that right. Yes, transexamic acid night treatment. So the more concentrated and intense, I guess, your serums are, you're gonna wanna use those at nighttime because a lot of serums, especially ones that are focused on like hyperpigmentation, brightening, all that kind of stuff can be a little bit sensitive to the sun. The transexamic acid is an ingredient that really, really helps to lighten hyperpigmentation, acne scarring. So transexamic acid is a newer ingredient and I'm really glad that Inky List kind of like jumped on this before it's getting super popular. I feel like in the next couple of years, you're gonna be hearing a lot about this ingredient, but basically it is great for dark spots, hyperpigmentation, all the stuff that I love to talk about, fine lines, wrinkles, and just basically evens out your skin tone. So, so the texture is honestly very, very different than anything I've tried. It's definitely a lot more silky and smooth. It's slightly thicker, so it honestly doesn't even feel like a serious when it first goes on. It feels something like a moisturizer or sometimes even like a primer. It is very, very smoothing and I like using it as a night treatment because it doesn't leave your face super greasy or anything. It just kind of absorbs really nicely and it actually works, guys. Okay, so I have a lot of, anytime basically I break out, it always leaves a dark mark. So you can see one, this one just went away a couple days ago. So it's kind of like darker, but even just around here, you can kind of, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but you can kind of see the dark spots that are starting to fade. The ingredients that they use are so, so high quality and I'm really excited to see tranexamic acid, like this just ingredient pop up in more skincare because it is great for hyperpigmentation. So I like to use this, which is my personal like active ingredient serum after my hyaluronic acid and then just to kind of like close that off and just kind of like rehydrate my skin at the end and make sure I'm not losing any of that hydration. This is actually something that the founders introduced to me because I had never heard of it. I remember getting it and they asked me if I used it and I didn't and they're like, okay, you need to start using it. Basically, it's called polyglutamic acid and get this guys, it actually holds four times more moisture than hyaluronic acid alone. So hyaluronic acid holds a thousand times its weight in water. This is four times that. They kind of like instructed me to use the hyaluronic acid first, the more like active ingredient serum in the middle and then just kind of use this on top, kind of like a hydration sandwich, if that makes sense. So it's really just gonna lock everything in. The texture 
serve this also kind of reminds me of the trinexamic acid. It's just slightly more runny, but it's a really, really nice texture, especially like if you're using it in the morning under makeup. It is just very, very smoothing. So I really, really like this product. By the way, the um, trinexamic acid is only $15 and I believe the polyglutamic acid is also $15. The packaging is like extremely minimal as you can see, but I kind of love that. It also sticks out from like all the others. So yeah, that is kind of like my skincare recipe and you can kind of follow the similar things. So you can get the hyaluronic acid, use whatever serum you want in the middle and then follow with the polyglutamic acid just to get your perfect little skincare recipe. So for example, just giving you a very basic example, if you have clogged pores or acne prone skin, um, like a beta hydroxy acid would be really great in between those two products or a niacinamide and stuff like that. So it's up to you. The world is your oyster. So now moving on to step four, I believe I said moisturizers in this step, but I actually prefer to use my eye creams before my moisturizers. The number one question that I got in terms of eye creams is something that helps with dark spots um, or like under eye circles and bags and depuffing. That is very similar to my skincare concern as well. I'm always trying to use eye creams that will help with that. And I have a couple here that I wanna share with you. The first one is actually from the Inky List as well. This is their Caffeine. It's literally just called Caffeine. They're very, very simple when it comes to the name of their products. Like it's not gonna be called like the beautiful magical essence. Like it's literally just gonna be called eye cream or like caffeine or the actual ingredient, you know? So hyaluronic acid, like that's, that's the name. That's all you're gonna get. No fancy stuff. So I like this because it's not a very thick cream either. It's a very nice consistency. It just kind of feels really, really lovely under the eyes. And this would be great if you had a skincare fridge or anything as well, um, just to have it be really cool under the eyes. But I feel like because it's a gel consistency, it is actually quite cooling under the eyes regardless. But it's a very thin formula, so it's not gonna feel heavy or greasy. Honestly, it reminds me a lot of a more expensive, where is it? Oh, of a more expensive eye cream that I really love. This is by Biosense. It's their squalene plus peptide eye gel. This is also another great eye cream that I really like. And honestly, y'all, the textures really remind me of each other. I don't know how much this is, but I know for sure it ain't $9.99. So that's always great. But yeah, this one, $9.99. So super inexpensive. Again, for eye creams, just use something that has to do with your skincare concerns. So if you have fine lines and wrinkles, if you have more mature skin, if dark circles aren't a problem for you, Congratulations, I wish I was you, but just use an eye cream that will help. So if all you need is hydration, use something for that. But this is also very hydrating, by the way. So moving on to moisturizers. So moisturizers, I feel like people who have oily or acneic skin are a little bit nervous to use moisturizers, and I don't understand this. Just because you have oily skin does not mean you need to stop using moisturizers. You just need to use a moisturizer that is right for you. So this is step five. If you have more oily skin, I would actually recommend a, a gel-based uh, moisturizer. So something like the Belief True Cream Aqua Balm, which is one of my favorites. I actually just ran out of that. Kind of like a dupe for that is actually the Neutrogena Hydra Boost Water Gel Cream. This is amazing. It's very, very hydrating. One of my good friends in Toronto, Samantha Jane, actually really loves this because she has dry skin as well. So it's literally a very, very thin formula and it blends into the skin so easy. It doesn't leave it greasy. It gives a glow, but not too much. So this is a great gel cream. And as I said, if you have oily skin, gel creams are gonna be your best friend. Now for everyone else, I'm not very picky with moisturizers to be honest. I will kind of just pick and choose whatever. I personally prefer to just use any sort of hydrating moisturizer, surprise, surprise. The one that I'm currently using is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. I switched to this for the winter time because my skin gets extremely dry in the winter. Really nice consistency and blends in very nicely as well. So just use any moisturizer. You can technically use moisturizers with like skincare benefits as well. Like you want like a brightening moisturizer or or anything like that. I just find just a good old hydrating moisturizer will be the best for you and will save you a lot of money. And you can use any moisturizer you like. A, a bunch of good ones are like CeraVe, that Neutrogena one that I showed you, Cetaphil moisturizers. Again, the world is your oyster. For me, it really, I'm not as picky with them, so. Use whatever you like. Now, this is a very optional step. I know a lot of people are gonna be very, very scared about it, but I actually saw some questions about this as well, and that is oils. When to use oils, whether you use them before or after moisturizing, are oils gonna break out your skin and clog your pores? Can people with oily skin use oils? There's just a lot of questions that I saw from you guys. If you have super oily skin, maybe don't use an oil. If you really wanna use an oil, you can. Like, rosehip oil is great for oily skin. It's not gonna like clog your pores or anything. 
everything. I personally really, really love the Biosan Squalene Plus Vitamin C Rose Oil. I honestly just put like two drops in my hand and just kind of press it into the, into my skin, especially if I'm wearing makeup that day. It kind of just makes your makeup like glide over your skin so nicely. It gives you more hydration. So at nighttime, I will always use a moisturizer. During the day, maybe not so much. So this is an optional step. I don't think it will break you out as long as you're using an oil that is of high quality and that is good for your skin. The Inky List actually also does have a rosehip oil. That would be a great option as well. That is super inexpensive. This one, a little bit more pricey, but I've been using it for three years and it's my absolute favorite. So love this stuff. Now the last and final step, this is obviously only if you are putting on your skincare in the morning is SPF. So this is step six. SPF is extremely important, especially if you're targeting hyperpigmentation or just kind of any skin type. It really doesn't even matter. Everyone has to wear sunscreen in the winter, in the summer, in the fall, in the spring. Every single season, wear your sunscreen. I have a couple favorites here to share. This one is a super goop everyday sunscreen. Um, this has broad spectrum SPF 50, um, PA++++. Plus. It doesn't have oxybenzone, which I know a lot of people break out from. It also doesn't give you a white cast. Let me just show y'all real quick. Like anything else in this video, like you can just use whatever products fit for you. These are just the steps that are essential in a skincare routine. Another inexpensive option is actually by Neutrogena Hydra Boost Water Gel Lotion. This is SPF 50 as well. And this doesn't leave a white cast either. So it's actually one of my favorites. However, it does have oxybenzone, which is a product that a lot of brands are trying to stay away from, especially now, but you will find it here and there. Um, I find it's just sometimes irritating for certain skin tones. For me, not skin tones, certain skin types. For me, it's not irritating, so I love the Neutrogena Hydra Boost, but if that's an ingredient that you are a little bit more afraid of, I would stay away and stick with the Super Goop products, which don't have um, oxybenzone. So anyways, that is pretty much it for the skincare steps. I really hope this video helped you guys. I know there might have still been a lot of confusion in this video, but Maybe I'll do like a whole video just answering your skincare concerns and maybe try to bring in like an expert or something. But please, please, please head over to the Inky List's Instagram. I will have it linked down below for you guys. Slide into their DMs and ask them any skincare questions you have. Tell them I sent you if you would like and they will help you out. They have an amazing team that will be able to build out a skincare routine for you and just kind of help you out. And I'm pretty sure sometimes they even recommend products that aren't even from their own product line. Like they just want to increase the education piece around around skincare. And if their products happen to fit into that, then amazing. Education is just like their number one concern. Like they just want people to be more educated with their skincare. They don't wanna hide their ingredients. If you didn't know, Inky actually is what the industry like refers to as an ingredient list. So on all their boxes, you will actually get information on how to use the products, the definition of them, what skin types they're ideal for, percentage of the active ingredients that they have, and then literally just all the ingredients in you know, right on their box. So they're very, very transparent with it. So I will have all the products that I mentioned in this video down below. Let me know if you have any other questions. Thank you so much to the Inky List for partnering with me in this video and letting me just share my love for your brand. I absolutely love these guys and love their founders. And I just hope that you guys can probably try even just one of their products, like their hyaluronic acid at least. And then that will reel you in, I promise you. That's what happened to me. <laughs> so if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I love you guys, and that is it. I'm really hungry, so I'm gonna go eat my lunch. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Mwah.